Welcome everyone to the 2021 Climate Leadership Series. I'm Amy Holm, Executive Director of the Climate Registry. And I'm Nat Cohan, President of the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions. C2ES, in partnership with the Climate Registry, co-hosts the annual Climate Leadership Awards and Conference, and we're thrilled to host this virtual conference and series. Thank you for joining us today. You know, this year kicked off with great climate ambition. We've welcomed a new administration that sees the importance of transformative climate action, and we've seen the international community deepen its climate commitments. A motivated private sector is also moving in step in this direction, setting and advancing net zero and carbon neutrality targets across sectors. These commitments will be incredibly important as world leaders meet at, in Glasgow in a few weeks for COP26. But beyond these commitments, we must have action. The recently released sixth assessment report of the IPCC was a sobering reminder that limiting warming to one and a half or even two degrees Celsius is critical. This will not be easy and meeting the challenge will require global leadership as well as ambition at the federal, state and local levels. The actions we take or fail to take now and in the coming decade to cut climate pollution and build greater resilience to the climate change that is already irreversible will reverberate for generations. That's why our theme for 2021 is ambition to action, mobilizing for a decade of decarbonization. We're thrilled to have the support of our 2021 sponsors. A special thank you to our headline sponsor, Bloomberg Philanthropies, and to our host city sponsor, Entergy, whom you will hear from later on in the program. Thanks, Nat. And thanks to the generous support of our 2021 sponsors, we are able to offer complimentary registration to this climate leadership series. We encourage you to share this event with your colleagues and network. With over 800 attendees from all over the world, we welcome new friends and we are happy to see many familiar faces that we know are joining us today. And although we're really missing running into you and are in our famed CLC exhibit hall, we do encourage you to visit our virtual exhibit hall and sponsor booth to learn more about the great organizations that are supporting this event and demonstrating their own ambitious climate leadership. Another in-person tradition that we're missing this year is celebrating together at our climate leadership awards ceremony and dinner. However, we will still be recognizing our esteemed group of 2021 Climate Leadership Award winners tomorrow during the virtual award showcase, which is included in your registration. So I hope you tune into that event as well. We're also excited to announce that following this three-day event, we'll be hosting additional CLC webinars and workshops throughout the fall. Now, just a few housekeeping tips. To connect with your colleagues, I encourage you to use the chat function to the right of your screen. If you do need assistance during this event, please email questions at climateleadershipconference.org. Today's session will be recorded and the recordings will be made available on the Hopin platform in the coming days. I hope that you find today's events engaging and inspiring. And let's get started with the program. We're happy to kick off remarks from Antha Williams, Environment Lead for Bloomberg Philanthropies. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to join you today at the annual Climate Leadership Conference hosted by the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions and the Climate Registry. I'm Antha Williams, and I lead the environment program at Bloomberg Philanthropies. It's inspiring to see so many of you across different sectors, from business and government to academia and nonprofits, take bold action to protect our climate. The scale of this challenge is unprecedented, and it's going to take all of us working together to ensure we avoid the worst impacts of climate change and build a more sustainable world from the ground up. At Bloomberg, we're proud to work with so many of you to tackle the climate crisis from all angles and to support today's conference. As founder of Bloomberg LP, Bloomberg Philanthropies, and as three-term mayor of New York City, Mike Bloomberg knows firsthand the importance of taking a whole-of-society approach to fighting the climate crisis. When Mike was mayor, he launched Plan YC, 
an ambitious plan for a greater New York and a greener New York that included extensive on the ground community engagement. That plan has since become a case study on how city-led action can improve air quality and advance city climate goals. Working together is key to meeting and exceeding our climate targets. Our core belief in a bottom-up, all-hands-on-deck approach, the same approach you all contribute to every day, helps guide the work across our environment program. I'd like to share a few examples with you today. In the United States and around the world, we've taken on coal making historic progress in shutting down coal plants and transitioning to clean energy by partnering with local grassroots organizations, local activists, and litigators. Here in the U.S., we've retired over 65% of coal in a decade, and our momentum is only growing. Our national success has spurred sister campaigns in Europe, Australia, Japan, and South Korea, where coalitions are working to eliminate coal and bring about a just transition for impacted communities. Because of our global dependence on fossil fuels like coal, air pollution has become one of the leading public health concerns we face worldwide, which is why we also support efforts to improve air quality and combat the public health impacts associated with breathing dirty air. We work with local organizations, city leaders, and community partners around the globe, including in places like Brussels, London, Paris, and Jakarta, to improve their air quality. Our programs are working to implement, implement innovative air quality monitoring programs that give cities the data they need to enact meaningful air quality policies, while also empowering community members with tools and educational resources to take action that protects their health. In so much of our work at Bloomberg, this bottom-up approach is vital in driving our strategy and ensuring high-impact, long-lasting progress. At global climate negotiations like COP26 in Glasgow, the focus is all about national leaders cooperating to set goals and standards for their future. But national governments can't meet their climate commitments without meaningful engagement from cities, regions, businesses, investors, and other local groups. To bridge that gap, Mike supports initiatives like America is All In and the UN's Race to Zero and Race to Resilience campaigns to help various levels of society commit to and reach ambitious climate goals. This need for collaborative transformation is precisely why we believe that America is all in, the most expansive coalition of cross-sector U.S. leaders ever assembled in support of climate action, has a critical role to play in implementing the U.S. climate target. In the lead up to COP26, we've already seen enormous momentum on the Race to Zero and Race to Resilience campaigns, with more than 800 cities and 4,000 businesses now part of the coalition committed to net zero and taking action to decarbonize our economy. Events like this are so important because we need to engage more actors across a variety of geographies, and we need to ensure that they have the capacity and support necessary to implement their ambitious commitments. The more we can implement this whole of society approach here in the United States, the more we can encourage other countries to do the same. By working with all levels of society, from the individual all the way up to national and international leaders, we can make meaningful progress in the climate crisis and rebuild a healthy, sustainable economy with good paying green jobs. Thank you again for having me today and for all you do to inspire collaborative, transformative climate action. And now I'd like to pass it over to Wendy Jaglum from RMI to say more about America is All In. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much, Antha. And thank you to Nat, Amy, and the rest of the conference organizing team for bringing us all together once again for this great convening and for inviting me to speak with you all today. I'm here today representing America is All In. Antha just gave us a great overview of the importance of a whole of society approach the critical role for non-federal leaders like many of you joining us today, and the continued importance of bottom-up leadership to address the climate crisis. I'd love to share with you all just a little more about what America is All In is doing to advance a whole of society approach to climate action. As Antha mentioned, America is All In is the most expansive coalition of US non-federal leaders committed to addressing the climate crisis including over 5,000 representatives of subnational government, the private sector, and civil society institutions. This includes city, county, state, and tribal governments, businesses and investors, and institutions of faith, culture, health, and education. 
America is All In represents the broader U.S. non-federal climate movement, a movement that accounts for over for two thirds of the U.S. population, over 70 percent of the U.S. economy and over half of U.S. emissions. Over the past decade, we've seen the powerful ability of these non-federal leaders to drive national climate ambition and progress. From the vehicle emission standards a decade ago to last year's HFC legislation, we've seen time and time again the ability for non-federal leaders to spur major nationwide emissions reductions. And this leadership continued even under a disengaged and often antagonistic federal administration. In three short years under the last administration, the number of electric vehicles on the road doubled, the number of cities committed to 100% renewable electricity quintupled, and communities across the country committed to all electric new building construction, to name just a few examples of progress. Now that we have a re-engaged administration, America is All In aims to mobilize a whole of society approach to climate action that combines this non-federal momentum with federal action and ambition. This mobilization includes scaling up and accelerating local climate action across the country, both through direct actions taken within the jurisdiction of our diverse coalition signatories and their peers, as well as by coming together to advocate for favorable state and local climate policies. It includes advancing an all of society approach to climate action, not just here in the United States, but around the globe. We hope to elevate the role of non-federal leaders on the international stage to encourage countries around the world to pursue a whole of society approach to climate action, while also continuing to boost the credibility of US climate action by showing the world the steadfast non-federal commitment to climate progress. Finally, the all-in mobilization includes both partnering with and pushing the federal government to advance a national climate strategy that reflects this whole of society approach. It is fantastic to have a federal administration that is re-engaged on climate and leading the way on this critically important issue, even bringing the full weight of the federal government through its whole of government approach to climate action. But we know that federal action alone is not enough to get us where we need to go. We need all levels of government and all parts of society working together to move at the speed and scale needed. In that vein, we need federal policies and investments that support ambitious non-federal climate action. And we need non-federal leaders like all of you continuing to push ambition and set the bar for even more ambitious federal action. We are at a truly critical time for climate action. We are seeing and experiencing the devastating impacts of climate change all around us, from deadly heat, drought, and wildfires in the West to deadly storms and flooding in the East. And the IPCC report shows us that these impacts are only going to get worse and that our opportunity to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius is quickly narrowing. As we approach COP26 in Glasgow, we need to show both our commitment and our plan to achieve ambitious emissions reductions. Over the next few days, you will be hearing from and about a wide range of climate leadership. On Friday, I encourage you to join my colleagues for a panel session discussing our latest America is All In report called Blueprint 2030, which outlines the breakthrough policies and actions needed from each part of society, from federal and subnational government, companies and civil society institutions, to give us the best chance of achieving our 2030 and 2050 emissions reductions goals. And then I encourage you all to go all in on climate action by taking action within your own institutions to advance climate solutions, by partnering with your peers across sectors and geographies to accelerate innovative solutions, and by calling on your local, state, and federal representatives to advance robust climate-friendly policies and, and investments. Now is the moment. Let's go all in together to tackle the climate crisis and advance a healthy, prosperous, equitable, and sustainable future. Thank you.